The Nobel Prize in Physics was just awarded for pioneering experiments that confirmed one of Albert Einstein's biggest doubts about reality. It's being called as the prize that saved physics because it brought science back to the strangest question of all. What is reality made of? In this video, you will understand what this Nobel is actually about, how it changed the direction of modern science and why it could finally give India a shot at another Nobel in science. But let's start with fascinating science behind it, uh, which we are going to explain simply. So quick note before we jump in, if this is the kind of science behind Nobel excites you, you will love what we are doing at Siesta. Our mentorship is helping thousands of students learn real research skills and explore research careers. You will find all the details in the link below and more about this towards the end of this video. Now, let's understand the Nobel winning discovery with one simple example. So let's start with common sense. Imagine you have a cricket ball at the bottom of the hill. To get the ball to the other side, you must give enough energy to roll all the way up and over the top, right? If you don't push it hard enough, it will go up and come back. It's simple, it's predictable, and it never fails. You simply cannot pass through the hill directly, right? And this is called classical physics. It's a set of rules that govern our everyday world of large objects, right? And it works perfectly. But the universe has a second set of rules for the tiny world of single atoms and electrons. These rules are called quantum mechanics. Now imagine that same hill, but instead of a cricket ball, we have an electron. According to quantum mechanics, if you place this electron in front of the hill or an energy barrier, as physicists would call it, something strange can happen. There is a small probability, a chance that it will not go over the top at all. Okay. Instead, it can vanish from one side and reappear on the other side. This effect is called quantum tunneling. It's not magic. It's a fundamental property of our universe. But this probabilistic nature, this small chance that uh, the idea that you can only know the chance of something happening is what made Einstein uncomfortable. He accepted that these rules work for single particles like electrons, but he argued that in our large scale world, the predictable cricket ball rules should always dominate and this single particle things are going to fail. So for decades, the big question for physicists was, where is the boundary? At what point do objects get too big to follow these strange quantum rules like quantum tunneling? Now this brings us to the 2025 Nobel Prize for John Martinez, Michael Debre and John Clark. They were among the pioneer scientists who designed the experiments to test this very boundary in the early 2000s. So they built a special electrical circuit so we call this a superconducting circuit or a qubit. The best way to think about this is they took billions of atoms and cooled them to temperatures colder than deep space, near to zero. At this temperature, the atoms stopped acting like chaotic, moving in perfect direction with alignment. So they essentially created one large controllable artificial atom. They proved that this man-made object could do things only single atoms were supposed to do, like quantum tunneling. And this part really hit close to home for me because during my time at NYSER, I worked on quantum many-body systems and it was one of the first of its kind at our institute. So we were exploring how large group of particles start showcasing collective quantum behavior, uh, something that sits right at the intersection of what these Nobel laureates achieved. So they proved a circuit can act quantum. That's cool, but why is it worthy of a Nobel Prize? Because that artificial atom they built is the heart of a quantum computer. So let me explain it this way. Your laptop works with bits. A bit is like a light switch. It can either on, which is a one, or off, which is zero, simple. This artificial atom they built is a new kind of a switch, which is called a quantum bit or a qubit. So a qubit is more like a continuous switch. Okay, it can be off, it can be on, or it can be both on and off at the same time. So when you have just one, it's weird. Okay, when you link hundreds of these qubits together, they can do millions of possibilities all at once. And they can solve problems that would take the fastest supercomputer billions of years on this earth. And this is called quantum superposition which eventually is the working principle of quantum computing. Now, these Nobel laureates observed a strange effect. They built the first reliable, you can call Lego block for this most powerful machines, 
that humanity has ever conceived. They laid the practical foundation for the entire quantum computing revolution. And of course, they are among the great scientists who are actively working in this domain across the world. So why is it being called the prize that saved physics? Because in recent years, the Nobel Committee has awarded prizes for complex systems, climate science and discoveries that uh, lies on the interface of computer science and physics and other areas. So these are very good, but it led to some worry that the age of fundamental physics is actually dying. And this prize brings back the focus to the fundamental physics or let's say quantum reality. So it's the science that will power the next computing revolution or next technological revolution, which is quantum computing. And that brings us to India. Let's be honest, since CV Raman, we haven't won a single Nobel Prize for research done in India. A major reason has been the lack of resources. We could not build the giant, large, city-sized particle colliders that cost billions of dollars. So we were trying to win a Formula One race with a Maruti 800 car. But this Nobel Prize highlights a different kind of science. It shows that the frontier of physics is not just about mashing things together in the biggest machine. It's about precision, control and brilliant engineering in laboratory setting. Although these kinds of superconducting experiments also entails huge resources and facilities. But the good news is that we have finally started in India as well. So the government has launched various schemes like National Quantum Mission, investing thousands of crores to push research in quantum materials, sensors and computers. And across the country, institutes like ISERTs, ISC, IITs and several research centers are now building state-of-the-art quantum labs. So this ecosystem is young, but it's growing fast. So this is a game India can actually compete in. The problem has never been a lack of talent. We have some of the brightest minds in the world, right? So what is the problem? It's often a lack of direction and the absence of research mindset from a young age. It's about channelizing that talent correctly. It's about teaching students not just to solve problems, but to ask fundamental questions. And that is the entire mission of what we do here at Siesta. We believe that the next generation of great Indian scientists is sitting in a classroom right now. So if you are a student who dreams of a career in research, of building the future and being part of India's scientific leap, I encourage you to check out our Kalam badge. It's designed specifically to help you fulfill your dream. And if you build that culture here, maybe, maybe the next Nobel winning experiment will not come from California, but from Kolkata, Bangalore or Bhubaneswar. Jai Hind.